tell me a story. If you've ever tucked a child into bed at night, you have likely heard this request. My kids would, use, would usually insist on the story being an original, um, but I would rapidly run out of this original material, and so I would start to tell other stories of movies that I knew, or TV shows, or books that I had read, and I would change some of the details, and I would spin it like a story, a fairy tale or something. And uh, often they would totally see right through me. They'd be like, oh, mama, that's Aladdin. Um, but it would be kind of fun to see how far I could get retelling other stories um, without them knowing. There's something so comforting about listening to a story, don't you think? We have apps that we pay for that will read us bedtime stories. Um, not to mention the podcasts and audiobooks that people devour. Um, some of the best advertisements even use story to captivate their audience. Um, getting you to buy into the story and hopefully also buy their product. Um, the most ambitious ones I've seen during the Super Bowl will actually tell you to go to their website uh, after a cliffhanger of a story on their commercial just so you can see what happens next. Do you have a friend or a family member who is an excellent storyteller? I have this really terrible habit of beginning a story and then forgetting some crucial piece of it and kind of just ruining the whole thing. Um, but my, my husband, Mike, is a wonderful storyteller. He embellishes at just the right point. Uh, his tempo is great. There's something just so engaging about the way he tells stories and people are just drawn to him. Well, storytelling was also a major way that the gospel was shared throughout history. Uh, before the printing press, written texts were rare and priceless. People couldn't just pull the Bible out of their pockets. Um, there weren't mass-produced books. There were only uh, educated people who had studied and learned and not only knew how to read and write, but they, could, they had access to these uh, precious documents, um, scriptures and other teachings. And so one way that uh, people who couldn't read or didn't have access um, to the texts would share these stories were through stained glass windows. If you've been in our space here at North Cross, um, you've seen the stained glass on the sides, um, and each one tells a story about um, all the way beginning with Adam and Eve and culminating in the cross and the early church. There are these tools and guides to help us um, and to stick in our brain. Music is another way that I love telling stories and remembering them. I might not always hear or hold on to an entire sermon, but I certainly have lingering refrains from hymns and uh, worship songs for years and years after I've learned them. In scripture, Jesus tells a particular type of story and we call them parables. Um, they're stories that have lessons wrapped up in them. They're glimpses of what the kingdom of heaven is like. Perhaps you've heard of the Good Samaritan or the Prodigal Son. Um, people actually use these as illustrations of a type of person, right? Oh, he's such a Good Samaritan or, yeah, you know, that Prodigal Son or Prodigal this or that. And they really come from Scripture and from Jesus telling stories to um, teach about the nature of God. Um, and we are actually going to explore uh, several of these stories over the next few weeks. Uh, but today, I really want to dive into why Jesus used stories in the first place. Um, after Jesus has just told a parable in Matthew chapter 13, the disciples want to know this too. Why, why are you doing this? Um, and so I'm going to read actually from... Uh, the message paraphrase uh, from Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. 
the disciples came up and asked, why do you tell stories? Jesus replied, you've been given insight into God's kingdom. You know how it works. Not everybody has this gift, this insight. It hasn't been given to them. Whenever someone has a ready heart for this, the insights and understandings flow freely. But if there is no readiness, any trace of receptivity soon disappears. That's why I tell stories. To create readiness, to nudge the people toward a welcome awakening. In their present state, they can stare till doomsday and not see it. Listen till they're blue in the face and not get it. I don't want Isaiah's forecast repeated all over again. Your ears are open, but you don't hear a thing. Your eyes are awake, but you don't see a thing. The people are stupid. They stick their fingers in their ears so they won't have to listen. They screw their eyes shut so they won't have to look, so they won't have to deal with me face to face and let me heal them. This is the word of God for the people of God. And we say, thanks be to God. I'll be honest. This passage of scripture has confused me for ages. Other translations use language that imply that God purposefully hides wisdom from some people and reveals it to others. Um, And this doesn't line up with my understanding of who God is. And so I talked to Pastor Sean and I was like, can you help me? I really want to wrap my head around this. And we did some digging. And uh, between looking through the message paraphrase and some other commentaries, uh, we landed on this particular um, thought that Jesus is wanting to help the people become ready to hear about the kingdom of God. Um, And that their hearts are just, they're just not ready. Um, So it seems that the eyes being opened to wisdom points to readiness to hear the good news. The stories or parables are tools for fostering that readiness. There's hope for everyone. But with people who are not ready to receive, the word will fall on deaf ears. Hence the stories. Do you remember last week when Sean asked if anyone had had their mind changed by someone yelling at them? Yeah, doesn't doesn't work so much. Jesus says, that's why I tell stories, to create readiness, to nudge the people toward a welcome awakening. Just as Jesus uses parables to awaken us to the coming of the kingdom of God, we can use our own stories to share God's love with those around us. My friend Vicki Lynch took some time to share how after even a lifetime in the church, God has continued to show up through the stories of others to illuminate scripture. Take a look. Hi, I'm Vicki Litch, and I am a longtime member of North Cross. I have been here off and on for almost 50 years. The Thursday group that I am in has um, allowed me to see the scriptures in a way that I hadn't thought of before. Because we're from uh, different backgrounds and we've grown up in different denominations and some of us have grown up in maybe not even in the church, are fairly new believers, then I am able to see those scriptures differently. Uh, Some of us are really good at um, having multiple books with us and, and looking at it from different ways, different theologians, different backgrounds of different people. And because of them, it requires me more to dig into those scriptures and to hear it with different ears and to know that how I thought of those stories before may not be how I should be looking at them today. Part of my experience and and the positive way in which I've changed is that we started another small group that meets in person on Monday night. It is a multi-generational group called Rooted. We have people who are first-time believers, we have people who are been in the church a few years, and we have people like me who've been in it for a long time. Um, our age range is like 23 to 80 something, we're not telling you how old. <laughs> but 
I still am digging and learning into scripture that I have probably, sometimes I look at it and say, oh, I've read that story like 10 times. I can't possibly read this again. And each and every time I say that, the Holy Spirit says, oh, so you think. And somebody else comes up with a different way of looking into that scripture. Or I find out what was going on in the world around Jesus when he was telling those stories. Or I learn more about who he was really speaking to. Or I actually have learned some words that, what was the real meaning in Greek? I am now also uh, serve as one of the lay people at McCrite Retirement Center. And I present a sermon and lead worship at McCrite. If you think you know everything about the Bible, start presenting scripture to uh, seniors who are in their 80s and 90s and who've grown up in the church. While they are very supportive of my message, some of the best conversations I've had about this scripture is how they have learned from me and how I learned from them in the way that they had encountered those scriptures. Isn't that awesome how the people that Vicki teaches and the Crite offer insight to her through their own life experiences and they get to learn from each other and see scripture in a new way. In the all generations perspective of her rooted group, she has people in their 20s up through their 80s and everybody brings something different through their own experience, their own story to help her see scripture, to see the gospel through uh, fresh eyes and to have um, new wisdom on top of things that she's already learned. We get a fuller picture of the kingdom of God when we engage with people who are different from us. Every time that Jesus shared a parable, he was sharing a story that magnetically drew people into his kingdom. He was constantly creating readiness and nudging people along in their journey. So how do we nurture readiness around us? I know that when I tell my kids, don't do that, usually falls on deaf ears. But when I ask them, why did you do that? Instead of becoming defensive, they respond with a genuine answer that can spark conversation. Can you imagine how this not only shifts this single interaction, but strengthens the relationship and helps you feel like you're on the same team rather than opposing sides. I believe that when we listen to other people's stories, we have to be humble. We have to be curious about their lives and the tale that they're telling and that the kingdom of God is full of humility and curiosity. That what we're seeking and what we're going for in this pursuit of Christ begins when we set down our defenses and we genuinely take an interest in people who are different from us. Jesus was doing that when he told these parables and when he met people where they were. He didn't bash them over the head with what he knew, and he knew everything, but he gently nudged. He invited people to be curious, to use their imaginations and wonder what the world could look like when things from his stories would come to life. Let's try this week to turn a knee-jerk reaction into a question that could pull out a story. Let us be quick to share our own stories of Jesus and let us draw near to the storyteller who offers the promise of the kingdom of God. Will you pray with me? Lord, thank you for meeting us and offering us nudges, glimpses into your kingdom. You so gently draw us in to your spirit and who you are. I pray that we could truly be interested in those around us looking for stories and new ways of seeing things. 
but that you would also give us the boldness, the bravery to share our own stories. That you might use who we know you to be as a part of being good neighbors, loving those around us, sharing the good news. Lord, we thank you for this gift that you've given us in your word, that we have access to it and that we get to use it as a part of every day of our lives. I pray that you might continue to use us for your glory. In your name we pray. Amen.